What's going on guys, welcome back. One of the things that we've noticed in the comments is a lot of people are really um, being partial to learning how to shoot better. So I wanna give you a couple more tips that's going to allow you to improve on your overall accuracy and speed, okay? What I did right here is just sent five rounds down range. One of the things I'm gonna tell you a lot is when I'm doing these demonstrations, I don't focus on my sight, I don't really focus on the target. I've done this so long, I can maintain something like that at five to seven yards like it was nothing, just, just off of recoil management. And we'll talk about that at a later time. These targets are high value targets. I like them. There's a lot of variations that you can choose from. Former Navy SEAL, I'm not sponsored by them. I, I'm, they do send me some targets, I just I like using them allows me to see exactly where my shots are going when I'm doing stuff like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on this little circle right here where the A is. What I tell people is three to five, seven yards, as long as you're under a baseball, if you get out to 10, softball size, that is a combative accuracy rating in my personal opinion. The more accurate we are, the better off we are. So this is just called a five round drill. Again, I would recommend you guys start off as a confidence drill at the three yard line. I'm in between three and five, I don't know. I'm gonna shoot five rounds, but it's absolutely self control is what we're looking for. And a couple of the other videos that I've done recently, I really tried to remove all of the concepts of stance, recoil management, and just get you focusing on what truly matters as far as accuracy. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. I don't care what grip you have. Isolate the grip from your trigger finger, obviously. If I do this and I get a good trigger pull, the sight should not, there should not be any deviation in the sights. It should be point of aim, point of impact outside of oscillation. So then when I squeeze the trigger, remember I'm not pulsing, I'm rolling into that trigger. Okay, what a lot of people do is the reason why they pulse is I need to know when the round goes off. So the only reason, the only way I can uh, determine that is if I pulse or jerk or slap the trigger, okay? We want to avoid that altogether. This drill is called the squeeze drill. <clears throat> Get in your sights. And what I'm gonna do is imagine an arc from the time I start saying squeeze till the time that I stop. This is also your trigger pull, meaning the length of the trigger pull. I'm gonna say squeeze, but as I start saying it, I'm actually gonna start applying pressure into the trigger. Squeeze, and whenever the round breaks over or goes off, fires, whatever, it does, okay? Don't worry about when, just simply focus on your sights isolating the grip and a smooth trigger pull. We're just gonna get into a decent stance. Slack out and squeeze. I'm pulling the trigger a little bit faster because I've done this so many times. And again, I'm aiming in this circle or this little white area where the A is. That's where I hit, okay? Do I want pinpoint accuracy? Some people can do it, I can't do it. I'm usually under a dime, under a quarter at three to five yards, okay, under these conditions. So reholster in between each round, and I'm gonna do five. So go ahead and come out. <sighs> Slack out, squeeze, and start pulling the trigger. Okay, you see that it's going off quite a bit faster or sooner towards the beginning of the word squeeze, and that's okay. I'm squeezing a little bit faster. If your trigger pull is a little bit shorter, that's gonna happen. So rounds are basically touching, all right? And I'm just gonna continue doing this for five rounds. If, for whatever reason, your accuracy is not under, you know, a 50 cent piece of baseball, something like that this distance, go back to the basics. Don't overthink it. Isolate smooth trigger press, and it should impact. Slack out, squeeze. All right, you see I took a little bit longer, which means I slowed down on my trigger pull. But look where I hit, okay, right there. As long as I don't jerk or slap the trigger, I can pull it uh, relatively fast. This is called your maximum effective trigger pull rate, which means, let's say I have 10 pounds of pressure in this hand. 10 pounds of pressure in this hand gives me 20 pounds. And I'm gonna give you a random number here. It allows me to pull the trigger five mile per hour before any deviation begins to occur. So you gotta practice that and figure out exactly, based on your grip, the gun, um, trigger pull, pull length and stuff like that. It's gonna vary, okay? So 
squeeze. All right, so here's number four, okay? So we're gonna come back and I'm gonna do another round. Slack out, squeeze. All right, so we have all of these rounds, all five rounds under a quarter. Not exactly where I was aiming. I really don't care. Again, combative. From the point of aim, if I'm under a baseball, that's combative, okay, in my personal opinion. But if we can do something like this, it's just gonna make us more effective in a gunfight or at further distances, okay? Now what you can do at this point is if you're at the three yard line, go ahead and go to the five, the seven, and just do a single round. Um, again, I'm at the five right now. Slack out, squeeze. So as you can see, as I go back, my shot grouping is going to start increasing. That's okay, all right? That's just due to your oscillation, things like that. So we're about, eh, I don't know, eight yards, I guess. Slack out, squeeze. That round went right there. So you can see the patterns are increasing. Don't worry about trying to get it under a dime the further you go back, regardless of what anybody says. So now I'm at eh, probably about 10. Slack out, squeeze. All right. One of the things you're gonna notice is you'll see a consistent pattern in people shooting. For whatever reason, today, mine's going up in this direction. So let's say I'm at, a, at the three yard line and I can hold a two inch grouping. Well, if I double that distance, that going back to the six yards, that two inch grouping now becomes four inches. So we can see that consistent pattern going in the 11 o'clock direction. At the end of the day, do I really care combatively? No, okay, so don't worry about it. Go on to the next drill here. This is focusing on recoil management, getting your follow-up shots dialed in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a single shot here, roughly, I'm gonna focus up in the upper thoracic. I'm not really, I don't really care about pinpoint accuracy, still looking for that combative accuracy, but this is gonna help you out, okay? We're gonna mold it all together. So I'm gonna take a single shot and then I'm gonna hold the trigger back, okay? And we'll fix that here in a minute. Single shot, slack is out, go ahead and take the shot. Whenever my sights are settled back down, go ahead and slowly release the trigger until you hear a click or pop. Stop, go ahead and put pressure back into the trigger. And about three seconds later, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, go ahead and start squeezing, hold the trigger back. Release whenever you're ready, click or pop, stop. Put pressure into the trigger, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Release, go ahead and put pressure into the trigger, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Release, stop. Put pressure into the trigger, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and release, okay? Do that three to five rounds. Even though I'm not really focusing on, you know, dime size accuracy, this is what you should be able to do. To demonstrate, take the slack out, go ahead and squeeze, boom, round goes off, it'll cycle, all right? This is a position I'm in whenever you're ready. Your sights are locked back in on target. Go ahead and release, stop. Start applying pressure, three, two, one, boom. Cycles, stop, sights are locked in, release, three, two, one, boom. Same thing, release, stop, three, two, one. Now we're gonna take it to the next level. We're gonna remove that pause. And the reason why I'm having you pause here for this instructional video is so you don't release your finger in said manner, okay? There's no reason for me to release into this slack area or take the finger off the trigger because I'm still wanting to get a follow-up shot, okay? So what we're gonna do this next drill is exact same thing, except for as the gun fires and begins to cycle, we're gonna release to that reset point instantly. I'm not pausing, so it's bang, release. Bang, release to that reset point. I'm not taking the shot yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and get to that reset point. You may or may not hear that reset on the mic. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot and then release. I'm already reset, but I'm gonna wait three seconds. 
put pressure into it. Three, two, one, release. Three, two, one, release. Three, two, one, release. Three, two, one, release. What you're probably going to see is your accuracy is diminishing. And this is why it's important for you to take that downtime, that three seconds before you start pressing into the trigger. You may even go from, remember that three second mark, pressure into the trigger, three, two, one, fire, reset. Then once I feel comfortable there, I may take it down to two seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, and then I take the shot and then I pick up that pace. So the overall goal is to get rounds downrange as fast as possible. So what determines how fast we can shoot? All right, you got two factors. How fast the trigger can be pulled, how fast the trigger can be reset, and then how fast that slide settles back down or sight settle back down on target. Doesn't matter how fast I can manipulate the trigger, pull and reset, if I'm still in the cyclic aspect of the gun. It doesn't matter how fast the recoil settles back down if I have a long trigger pull or I don't have that fundamental aspect down. My sights could actually have settled back down, but my trigger's not completely reset, okay? So yes, you can pull the trigger if your gun's like this, if it's in the cyclic aspect, but you're not gonna hit the target outside of point blank range. So we have to ensure that we acquire the sights and we have to ensure that the trigger is reset, obviously. I've actually seen people short stroke the trigger, so they fire this first round, second, whatever. It cycles, they don't go to the reset point, and then they go ahead and smash the trigger, okay? Or pull the trigger, and it's not going to fire, obviously, because it hasn't reset. So we need to build that into the muscle memory as well. So you can do this dry. Squeeze, fire, cycle. Release, squeeze, fire, cycle. The only problem with doing this is if I'm still jerking the trigger, you see that the barrel dipped. It's not going to calculate for your inability to pull the trigger properly. So what I'm gonna do here is transfer from a target set such as that over into a, we'll say a more realistic target. One of the things you have to start doing from targets like this to targets like that that's more realistic is understand you don't have all these lines you don't have these lines so mentally symmetrically it's a little bit harder to focus on okay so aim small miss small we're going to start at the three yard line and we're just going to go through a draw stroke it doesn't matter if you have a battle belt it doesn't matter if you have ccw you know it's interesting if somebody says what good is a battle belt ignore the battle belt if i run a video in a battle belt and you don't run battle belts then use your ccw and i love you but just stop whining Everybody wants to make comments on stuff like this that's so petty, you don't realize at the end of the day how many silly comments you've made you've wasted part of your life. And if you calculate how much time you've wasted throughout your, you know, the years, it adds up. So if it doesn't apply to you, don't use it. Don't waste your time commenting on people's stuff that has no bearing on your life. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a draw stroke. It doesn't matter what speed. What I want you to do on this is pause between sights on target and when you take your shot. So threat's gonna be called, you can use a timer, you can have somebody say it, whatever, go through your draw stroke, pause, take that slack out, confirm your sights, take your shot, reset your trigger, ensure your sights are lined back up, reset, okay? Now, this basically shows me that I have self-control, okay, under these conditions. Let's say that was three seconds. So I'm gonna try and do two seconds in between sight confirmation until the round goes off. So threat's called, boom, 1,001, 1,002. Oh no, I didn't hit exactly where I was aiming, but is he dead? Is this hostage saved? Yes, so don't worry about fine tuning aspects under combative conditions. So now we're gonna to try to do one second from Sights on target till the round goes off. Thrip. Three, two, one, boom. There you go. All right. And we just pick up the pace from there. It's really important that when you're training to push yourself to failure, but we don't want to remain in that fail zone. So what I mean by that is I come out. 
not even in the sights, all right? I'm relying on my natural point of aim. Round goes right there. 007 stuff, all right? So speaking of which, I'll give you a tip on that. This is refining your natural point of aim. I'm gonna work on uh, this number one here. Doesn't matter, again, if you're in a battle belt, doesn't matter if you're working from a holster. What matters is you break the principles down, perfect the principles, and then grow from there. So what I'm gonna do is go what I refer to as either turtle slow or teacher slow because you're teaching yourself. Therefore, you have to go very, very slow, okay? As I draw, for me personally, I come here. I don't drop down, I don't hook into it. I come straight out of the holster, 90 degrees. I'm pushing out so I can engage someone close quarters. So you can see it's fairly parallel to the ground. As I'm pushing out, remember I'm not chopping into it, my sights are aligned and at full extension, I should be able to shoot. So once again, I'm at the three yard line. Do this dry, many, many reps, okay? Don't take the shot unless your sights are confirmed. So as I come out, I'm at full extension, my slack is out, the round should be able to go off. And what I mean by the round should be able to, excuse me, I should be able to pull the trigger is my sights are lined on the target. Therefore, I, I have the ability to commit to that round. So once again, okay. At full extension, everything should be lined up. The round can be fired. So just back it up. You see how slow I'm going? You may have to go slower than this. even at, you know, seven, eight yards, some, one of those, okay? This is uh, really fun to practice. This is really going to help you get on target out of your holster. So go slow. Slow, slow, slow. All right, so as you see, the further we go back, there's gonna be more discrepancies, okay? I don't know what I did there exactly, but it doesn't matter. If I go back to what I already know, Confirm the sights, isolate the grip, good trigger pull. I should be able to hit. So again, I think I'm about, I don't know, 10 yards right now. So come out. And we're back on target where I like it, okay? Go super slow, demonstrate one more time. Super slow, super slow, super slow. So I'm pushing up, you can see the gun's parallel. I'm not pausing, I can pause and then take the shot, but full extension, the round can go off. So full extension, the round can go off. Where's your full extension? Your full extension may be here. Mine is right here, okay? So practice this, have fun with it. Have a great day and God bless.